Welcome to Electron Online. Here we're going to do a second example of the chain rule using partial derivatives. Our original function z is a function of x and y. It's the square root of x, y plus y. And x is a function of theta and y is a function of theta. What we're trying to do is find the derivative of the function z with respect to theta when theta equals pi over 2. What we know is that the partial derivative of z with respect to theta can be written as the partial derivative of z with respect to x times dx d theta plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y times dy d theta. Let's go ahead and find all those derivatives and see what we get. This is equal to the partial z with respect to x, so we take the derivative of that, it would be 1 half times xy plus y to the negative one-half power times the partial derivative of what's inside with respect to x, which in this case would be times y. We multiply that times dx d theta, the derivative of x with respect to theta, which is going to be a minus times the sine of theta, because the derivative of the cosine is a minus sine. We add to that to the partial derivative of z with respect to y. So we take the derivative of that, which is one-half times xy plus y to the minus one half power times the derivative of what's inside with respect to y. In this case, that would be x plus 1. And we have to multiply that times the derivative of y with respect to theta. The derivative of sine is equal to the cosine of theta. Now we can probably simplify that a little bit and see what we get. So this is equal to we have minus y times the sine of theta divided by 2 times the square root of x times y plus y. And then here we get plus x plus 1 times the cosine of theta divided by 2 times the square root of x times y plus y. All right. Now we want to evaluate that when theta equals one half. So dz d theta, when theta equals one half is equal to. So what we need to do now is we need to evaluate x, y, the sine of theta, and the cosine of theta all when theta equals one half. So let's begin with the cosine of pi over two is equal to zero, and the sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. Therefore, we can then say that x, since x is equal to the cosine of theta, so when theta is equal to pi over 2, that implies that x, which is the cosine of theta, is equal to 0, and y, which is the sine of theta, is equal to 1. Knowing all that, we can now plug that in here. So we're now going to take the derivative of z with respect to theta, evaluate it when theta equals 2. Oop, not 1 half, but pi over 2. All right. So this is equal to minus y. Now y is equal to 1 times the sine of theta. And the sine of theta is going to be equal to 1 divided by 2 times the square root of x times y. But x is going to be equal to 0. That's 0 times 1 plus 1, plus x plus 1, that would be 0 plus 1, times the cosine of theta, which is 0, divided by 2 times the square root of 0 times 1 plus 1. Now, of course, here, since the numerator is going to be 0, this whole fraction is going to be 0, and here, that means that this is equal to minus 1 divided by, minus 1 divided by 2 times the square root of 1, which is equal to minus 1 half. There we go. Which means that the derivative of the function z with respect to theta, when theta is equal to pi over 2, which is equal to minus 1 half. And that's how it's done.